Arunya Ghosh, a third year student at MIT Manipal and in this video, we'll be discussing everything about academics in my college. I've also reviewed my college on this channel. Here's a shameless plug for it. You can watch it right here if you haven't already. There's an entire section dedicated in it towards academics. I also have an entire playlist discussing the coursework in each of the semesters I have had in detail. I'm in my fifth sem right now, so four full length videos. Watch them before or after watching this video so that it's a good introduction to a more nuanced understanding of the curriculum at MIT. With that being said, Let's dive right in. Grading. We are graded on a bell curve, which means that it's relatively graded, which means that you're competing against your peers for the top grade. If your friend does really well on a test and you don't, your grade goes a little more down than what it would have gone down by if it was absolutely graded. Theory is relative grading and labs are a little bit of a combination of both absolute and relative. I used to think up until last year that labs were only absolutely graded, but according to some of the professors, it's apparently not. It's a little unclear, a little ambiguous to say the least, but regardless, the route to a 10 pointer remains the same. All A pluses. Each course has a certain number of credits associated with it. For theory courses, three credit courses mean three hour long classes per week. And for four credit courses, it is four one hour long classes per week. Labs are always two and a half hours long once per week, regardless of the credits, at least in the CS related branches. They might differ a little for the core branches. Your CGPA is affected by the number of credits each subject has. So when a lot of first years panic about workshop or engineering graphics, I tell them to relax and take it a little easy because it is not going to make such a massive difference in your CGPA if you get a C or a D in EG. They are just one credit labs. It won't be the end of the world. Focus mainly on the three and four credit subjects. Get as high of a grade as possible in those. They are what take your grade up or down by the most amount. Just to give you a comparison, getting an A from an E in a one credit lab is equal to getting a B from a C in a four credit subject and I feel like the latter is a lot easier. I mentioned in my curriculum videos about the passing marks as well. In lab, 40 is always passing, 40 to 50 is an E, 50 to 60 is a D, 60 to 70 is a uh, what? 60 to 70 is a C, 70 to 80 is a B, 80 to 90 is an A, and 90 to 100 is an A+. Plus. For theory, there's no clear cutoff like that. If a subject is very difficult, then a 75 could get you an A, whereas in some easier courses, that might not even be enough to get you a B. 36 is the passing always. According to the professors, it varies from subject to subject, but we all know if the passing goes above 36, a lot of people are going to fail and nobody wants that. Even the administration wants to pass as many people as possible. You have to get a minimum of 18 in your NSEM and then 36 or whatever that they deem as the passing mark overall. Adding up the NSEM and the internal marks. So even if you have a 30 in your internals and a 15 on your NSEM, you won't pass. It does make up to 45, which is more than the passing 36 overall, but an 18 in the NSEM is not fulfilled in this case, which means you'll have to appear for the makeups. But that rarely happens though. If you have a 30 in your internals, the chances of you getting an F are minuscule. If you have a 15 internally, then an 18 in the NSEM will not suffice. You will have to have a 20 plus score at the bare minimum. What happens if you fail? You have two options. One, apply for re-evaluation or two, appear for the makeups. Both of them take place during the vacations. I would personally never really recommend you putting your paper for re-evaluation, especially if you've just borderline passed and are not even on campus. You won't be able to see the paper online. You'll have to travel all the way to the college, to the campus to physically view your paper. I know, makes no sense whatsoever. There's also a chance of getting your grade decreased, which is by far one of the scariest things. If you have an E that you'd like to bump up to a C or a D, apply for reval only if you're absolutely sure you did not deserve it. Your internals were awesome, your NSEM went really well. 
otherwise don't do it if either one of them were not ideal in my opinion don't do it don't put it for reval or if it's a shocking grade only then you knew you'd comfortably pass with a b or a c but then you land at an f c to f and f to c are more common than you think in case of an f do put it for evaluation but also start studying for the makeups they are more favorable especially if you live close to the college you get the opportunity to bump up your grade to a c at the max the grades in the makeups are always capped at a c unless you weren't able to give the ensem for a genuine medical reason which has been already approved there are a lot more nuances to this which you will understand after spending a couple of semesters in the college what happens if you fail the makeups you have to re-register for the course assuming that the failing grade is final and it is after the re-evaluation of the makeups i've explained the re-registration part in my attendance video you can watch it right here on to the next one getting good grades now i may not be the perfect student to give you advice about good grades because mine aren't especially great but regardless i'm hoping that you'll be able to learn from my mistakes and not repeat them first you have to make them a priority if you want good grades agree some of you may think that grades are no longer relevant now that you're in college and you might be partially correct in that assumption but that is a discussion for an entirely new video it differs on an individual basis whether or not you should be focusing on a high cgpa comment if you'd like a video on that too getting a good gpa is simple but not easy those are two different things The total is out of 100, ensems are 50 marks and internals are 50 marks. You should be trying to get as high of a score in your internals as possible. 99% of the times and here I speak from my own and my batchmates' experiences, if you have lowish internals, that translates into having low marks in your ensems as well. That snowballs into a low grade for your overall course as well. It is very difficult to compensate for a low grade in your ensems. sense because most of the time you scored low in the first place because you weren't able to understand what was being taught in class or did not follow the course very well or maybe you just did not study well enough by yourself let's say you got a low 30s in your internals you can still pull that up to an a A plus is a little ambitious at that point almost kind of impossible because it is more likely to be 85 or 90 plus if your ensems go really well then an A or a B otherwise but if you have a low 20 score there's no chance that you will be able to make it above a C in most cases and below that you better study your ass off to avoid that F I've only had a couple of subjects with 40 plus internals which is math 3 and software engineering math 3 i ended up getting an a software engineering the ensem is tomorrow i'm recording this one day before my ensem likes for the dedication if you will for a couple of difficult courses 33 or 34 in the internals and an amazing ensem will get you an a all the other courses where i've had an a all my internals were pretty decent in the 30s at the minimum how are the internals divided The pattern changes every academic year. It always differs. Right now, the most significant change is that we have only one mid-sem of 30 marks instead of two mid-sems up until last year, both of 15 marks each. Also, we used to have four five-mark assessments. This year, it has come down to three. The overall distribution varies every year, but the formula is simple: study as much as possible for your midterms. They are what take your grade up and down by the most, apart from the ensems, obviously. The five markers are sometimes a little tricky to score in. They also become a little inconsequential sometimes because they could be open book tests or multiple choice questions. So not a lot of effort goes into that. Plus, the entire class gets more or less the same amount of marks. That is not the case for midterms, though. So take them really seriously. Ideally, start preparing a couple of weeks before. for their due and don't leave anything for the night before it is not going to be fun thirdly it's risky to depend on makeups by the time your ensems roll in you will have a fairly decent understanding of your preparations to take them in case if it's not adequate you might think of an easy way out okay i'll only study the strong subjects now and leave the later for makeups typically both the ensem and the makeups are always of the same difficulty level but 
in the one or two times the makeup is way tougher than the end set you will be so screwed this happened with the data structures course in ICT more than half of the batch had gotten an F so everyone had to appear for the makeups to their bad luck the paper was way more difficult than what was expected like twice or thrice of the difficulty level that is normally asked in the end sets so from that population half of them had to re-register which is really sad in essence try to put your best foot forward dedicate all your time towards studying when the ensems are nearby and do not rely on makeups as an option they are only a backup not your first option that is it for today like share subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye